Howdy folks, this is Justro at Matt Kaif Mills. Today I got a video for you. We're getting the sorghum grain ready to be planted. And we'll go through that start to finish. From taking it off of the head, cleaning it, all the way to planting it. And hopefully this fall, if everything goes good and we miss the sugar cane aphids, or I can at least keep them under control, we'll be cooking some of this sweet sorghum syrup. Sargum coming at you. So right here's our sargum seed heads. And you can see that they're just hundreds or thousands of seeds on one of these heads. Just one of them. Uh, just bunches and bunches of seeds. And the way I get these off on a small scale is just take my hand and just rub between my hands like that. And you can hear them peppering down on the screen right here. And they are a little bit of a, a pain sometimes to thrash. But, uh, and something else I'll tell you, you probably can't see it on the camera, but there's just a cloud of dust coming off this. This stuff is like other small grains. It's got real fines, real fine particles that comes off of it when you start messing with it. And they will, uh, when I thrash this stuff on a large scale, you just get itchy all over. Down your neck, you have to tie a rag or a bandana around your neck and and try my wear a mask and try to keep that dust off of you as much as you can but it's just it's absolutely terrible how that dust is with this stuff and it's so itchy and abrasive to a person so just keep rubbing 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 like that and a thing i try to do is like when i get done of course, don't have to worry about it with these seeds because they matured really good. Like, see, there's quite a few seeds left on there. I don't really like to force them to come off because chances are they may not be fully ripe. So the ones that come off the easiest, that's the ones I like to use because I know they're closer to being ripe. Now, on this grain, because it stayed in the field so long... Uh, it's probably all ripe, but I still just... That's a practice. I don't force all the seeds off of the head for that purpose because they may not be fully mature or whatever and don't want to turn loose yet so i just leave them on there and i just let kind of let what comes out come out just rub rub And these seed heads, like I say, they so many seeds on there. You can, you can take, you know, one head. If you go that, go by that, one head would plant a whole lot of uh, uh, sorghum patch. But we want to divert, make sure it's diverse. So we're going to take seeds from a bunch of different heads and mix them all together to keep that genetic diversity going. I might even throw in some some seed from years past, mix it in with it, just to give it a little a little different, you know. Kind of like people, we don't want to all breed on the same stalk. You know what I mean? <clears throat> rub that and that dust i like to do it out here on the porch where we got a little breeze and it'll carry that dust away from me that makes it nice and i can talk to you without a mask on and you can understand and hear me i wanted to go early on this sorghum because last year my big i had a bunch of sorghum growing last year and i got it planted at the exact wrong time and the sugar cane aphids swarmed in they come in on storms i've got videos about that if you go back and look but they just absolutely devoured my my sorghum and ruined it and it's uh this year i was hoping to try to get it out earlier but the way the year's looking i think i'm <laughs> happy that it's gonna be later So it's going to be 
a later harvest, which is nice because you're cooking with, we cook this sorghum down with over a fire and a furnace with a fire and it gets, it gets pretty hot and steamy. And if you're doing that in August, which we have, it's, uh, we set up fans and whatnot, but it gets pretty, it gets pretty sticky. So we'll hopefully be cooking this maybe in October. I don't know, September, October, maybe. And hopefully, too, like I was talking with the sugar cane aphids, hopefully them little boogers will be, hopefully they'll miss the boat. When they get here on the storms, our sorghum won't be ready for them, hopefully, and they'll try to find, maybe find something else to eat or just do whatever aphids do when they don't have sorghum to, to, to eat. In selecting these seed heads, I just try to pick out the big, healthy plants got the big old healthy stalks good good genetics for stalk size and you know make sure they didn't have aphids on them and whatnot of course some of these did and i don't like that but it was pretty mature when the aphids got so bad on it so and you can still there was patches the aphids didn't get on but you always want to try to save your seed from healthy plants that have not had a lot of problems in their life that's going to negatively affect their genetics. So, If all goes well, hopefully, with this... Uh, sorghum i hope to have some seed to offer y'all this fall this winter for next year if you're interested in growing sweet sorghum it's a lot of fun there's a lot of people do it on a small scale if everything goes right i hope to be uh, sharing the process with you this fall of cooking this stuff down on the furnace i got a new sorghum pan last year my buddy tim made a video on that he fabricated me a new sorghum pan big stainless steel pan i'm excited to use that new pan on this sorghum so i was thinking about planting two runs this year i get in there planting i might get excited and plant more but uh the more more you plant the more work you got to do and this is a job when this stuff comes up a lot of people talk about how hard a job it is but to me, I enjoy it. It's a lot of work. You gotta, when that cane's standing out there, it looks about like a corn stalk, except it don't have ears on it. It's got these seed heads on top and it's got pretty blades, pretty blades on it, leaves, and it's tall. And you have to go through there by hand is what we do and I strip them leaves off, what you call the fodder. You strip that off by hand. You clean each stalk clean of fodder. No fodder on it. Some people does that with a tool. Some people's even kind of invented and built stripping machines that go through there. Kind of like a big uh, multi multiple headed weed eater. And it just kind of beats the fodder right off of the rows. And then you can come back. After you get it stripped, you come back uh with a with a big uh like a bite what we use a backer knife for cutting backer and uh we'll cut them stalks off and load them on the trailer or the truck and you usually have somebody there at the truck or trailer clipping seed heads you clip these seed heads off as we go throw them on a like if we're putting a lot of times if i'm we're cutting sorghum and putting it on the trailer Whoever's cutting the seed heads, I'll put a sheet in the back of the truck and just throw throw the seed heads on the back of the truck or if the trailer's big enough on the front of the trailer there. Separate them as we go. That works real good. And you can also... This is a real multi-use plant because you get... There's like four ways to use this plant. The you know four different uses for it that you can have all in the same year like 
So you, you cut it and then you haul it into the cane mill and you, you press it or squeeze it in the cane mill and get that juice out of it. And that juice is what you cook down to make your sweet sorghum syrup. And then you got the seed heads if you save them. This is a good grain. It's got a really good taste. Uh, we've sold some to a baker and he made like a porridge bread with it. Somehow he milled this grain up and mixed it in with his dough and it was really awesome flavor. So it's, you get that use out of it. As well as if you strip the fodder off, if you save that fodder, you can use that for bedding for your animals or you can use it for mulch. We usually just drop it where it falls, right in the field, let it go back that way, feed the microbes. But you can, uh, you can also use, after these stalks are pressed, they're just, it mashes pretty much all the juice out of them. And they make really good mulch, especially if you uh, grind them up like with a chip or shredder. They make really good mulch to mulch your garden beds and whatnot with. Good organic mulch. So, like I say, a lot of different uses for this plant. And the sweetest one is, of, for sure, the sweet sorghum syrup. So. We got a several heads of this stuff thrashed off there, as you see, and I've just been a, just a, getting it between my hands and rubbing it because what you'll get is you'll get where it breaks off little tiny stems. See that little tiny stem with them grains on there? I just want to break all that up as much as I can so that I can get it out with the fan when we winter this stuff. So I'm just a working, working it up between my hands a little more and getting that stuff broke up so we can get it out of there and we put this in our planter it'll be nice and clean it'll run through that planter real smooth and be able to be able to work that way that looks pretty good we'll we'll winter that stuff and see what we got but there's a lot of grain right there folks a lot of grain right there Something else I'm going to do here. You see there's a lot of grains fell through there. Them are smaller grains. And it's usually a problem uh, in the planter. i found that if you've got smaller grains, they want to carry two or three on the planter plate at a time. And you'll have two or three stalks and you have to go back through and thin that stuff. So I'm going to do a little bit of grading here on these seed for size. And the way I'm going to do that is I got my double screen here. I'm just going to shake that around. Shake it around. Shake it real good. Try to grade out them smaller size seeds so they don't go in my planter. So all we get is a good big size grain. And I'm going to rub and kind of push down on that screen under there. And if they some it's close to small, I'll force them on through there. That's what that's for. Just like that. Force them down. As well as force some of that small trash through. We won't have to get as much out when we go to wintering.
That's the only solution I've found to not having a mess when you plant. Hey, some planters, I guess it's not a problem with, but my planter, it is a problem, so I'm going to try to deal with it now but before it turns into a growing problem. Force that through there. Now you can see a big difference. What we've got there is pretty pretty uniform size, size big grains of sorghum. So let's see what we've got in the bottom screen now. Oh yeah, looky there. Look how many small grains come out of those. Now them is what gets carried up two or three at a time in the planter and you get to plant more than what you wanted to. So it's the first year I've done this to try to solve the problem of too many plants in a, you know, per stand. So we'll see if this deals with it. I'm pretty certain it will. Hopefully it will. Let's go clean this stuff up a little bit more. Now, folks, this setup we got here, it's real high-tech. I hope you can uh, keep up with me on this, and I don't go over your head too bad. But what we got here is just a box fan. I got my big copper catch pan down here that I like to use for stuff like this. And what we're going to do is we're going to turn our box fan on high. Right there on high. We're getting a good current of air blowing across through here. And now what we're going to do... Take our bucket of sorghum seed. I'm just going to very gently, just very, very gently pour a little stream of sorghum grain right in front of that fan. Now you have to get this in just the right spot so you won't blow your seed away. You won't blow your grain away. You want that fan to blow the light stuff away, but you don't want to blow none of your grain away. You have to have it on just the right spot for that. Sometimes you'll get a little seed bounce and they'll bounce out. You gotta go real slow. You can see over here my left foot, what it's blowing all that light stuff out of there. It's working like a charm. We're just gonna keep it going with it like that. Keep blowing that light stuff out. a lot of that light trash out of our sorghum grain so we got something nice and clean to plant usually on this sorghum grain you have to do this a couple times when you get a pile of it you can raise up a little bit because it don't bounce so bad you can see over here see all that fine stuff that we blowed out still quite a bit of fine stuff in here it didn't turn loose of the grain so it's heavy it's gonna it's gonna fall down with the grain because it's still heavy just kind of do the best we can pick out the chunks and the clumps try to separate them as best we can i usually do that process right there two or three times to get this grain cleaned up really good
Another thing to do, folks, when you're winnowing, you want to pour your grain so that the waterfall is facing the fan. So when I pour out of this bucket, the stream is wide. It comes off wide because the lip of this bucket makes it wide. Well, you want that wide waterfall against your fan because then it gives it more chance. You don't want to pour with the wide waterfall, the edge of the waterfall against your fan, because then you're not going to get that air going through there. So we want to pour with that waterfall back here next to our fan to give that a chance to blow that fine stuff out of there. Just like everything else, you play with it a little bit to find your sweet spot, what works best, where you're not losing grain and where you're getting it clean. getting a little cleaner it's getting a little cleaner every time if you can see that there see there they still a little bit of stuff on there I'll work it in my hands a little bit more and we'll we'll winter it one more time and see if it ain't clean enough to plant Your grain won't bounce out so bad. You 
separate more of that fine stuff like that. The grain is falling into that grain down there and it won't bounce out on you. But you'll still get that good airflow of separating it out. Ready to plant. Ready to plant. There's our finished product. That wouldn't be clean enough for me for milling grain, but that's because it has to go through another process before you clean it for milling. I made a little machine called a degloomer. And what that degloomer does, see them glooms, them little red skins on some of that grain? Can you see that? All them little skins sticking out off some of the grain. see all that skin stick in there that degloomer i made it'll it'll rip that off and it'll clean the grains all they'll all be just like just like them right there just real clean no skin and that's what you want for milling one of these days i'll show you how that degloomer works and we're cleaning some of this stuff for milling These planters, it's real easy to change the, the sprockets and the plates and set it up for whatever spacing you had it on, or whatever space that you wanted, I mean. So this is a six tooth cog wheel, and down here on the press wheel, we've got a 12 tooth cog wheel. And uh, <clears throat> the corn we was planting, we got that four cell plate on there and it's planting that corn, I think about 18 inch spacing on it. That's what I like. And on this sorghum we're getting ready to plant, we're gonna swap out the six tooth and the 12 tooth, put the 12 tooth up here, six tooth down here, and that will give us about a eight or a 10 inch spacing on our sorghum stalks. So that's about exactly what we want with that stuff. changing these cogs we'll go from a four cell plate on the big corn to a 16 cell plate with a spacing changed of from 18 inches to 10 inches 
on a lot smaller plate. It'll be a real small plate for this sorghum. your chain on your planter real super tight. Just want it tight enough to, well you want it slack is what you want. You don't want it tight at all, you want it slack. Just a little bit slack, not much. That's good. If something fouls up, you don't want to break something, and that little bit of slack kind of lets it jump a little bit. Now to change this plate out, we're going to find me a grease rag. I've got one on the tractor. It's to no account to get it out of the toolbox. I bet you them ain't helpful. Now they ain't hurtful either. If you're a bug out here in this field with nothing much growing, and you're to the point you have to start laying eggs on weeds, you're pretty bad shape, ain't you? Pretty bad shape. All right, change plates on this little covens and planter right here. Take these two wing nuts off. change plates on this baby. Sorry about the fingers in the way I got my camera lens on the wrong side apparently. Our four cell corn plate that we use for corn. Our 16 cell sorghum plate going on. Now this is important. You don't want to get this nut too tight because what will happen, it will bind up your plate. So you loosen that thing where your plate has got some wiggle room. And everything will go a lot smoother for you. On that corn, I got the plate too tight the other day. And uh, 
See it tightens up, you have to back it off and make sure you're back where you want to be. See how that's got a little got a little wiggle in there. That'll make her work right. All right. But I was planting corn the other day, and I got my when I started, I got my plate a little too tight, and the corn grains, two grains that get in there at the same time, what they was doing is they was wedging, they was wedging in that plate between that plate and the housing there, and it was wedging that plate and stopping the press wheels from turning on the ground, so it can get fouled up there pretty good. You ain't got the right tension on that plate. Box has fell down a little bit. There we go. Now we can tighten her on up. Alright, looks like we're ready to ready to get it sugar drips argum Use my fertilizer hopper for a storage box for my seed and tools. All right. Do a little test drop here. You see them grains coming up, getting carried up, are real fine. If you can see them or not, but they're right in there, right in there. There, you might be able to see them there. The sun's kind of dry. See them in there? There you go. Sometimes it'll plant more than more than one grain. Sometimes it'll plant two or three if they're small. That's why halfway. The other day when we was cleaning grain, I halfway separated the small ones out. I'm hoping that'll help this time. We'll see. Now planting this cane is a different animal. You don't plant it deep as you do corn. You just want it kind of just barely on the surface, just barely under the surface, on or under. I've heard an old timer say he planted his cane just almost on top of the ground. But it sure is a fact if you plant it too deep, it won't come up. It's more like a weed seed or something, I guess. I'll show you. You can see there how that double disc opener is just barely touching the ground. It's just barely scratching along. Them cane seeds have got just a little teensy weensy groove to go down into. And then when it rains, they'll be up quick, hopefully. Barely scratching the surface. Folks, I hope you enjoyed this video. I love growing sorghum. And my family's done it for years and years and years. It kind of stopped when my grandpa got sick. My dad never did grow none. And then I worked in it throughout my life and started growing some with a friend a few years back and been growing it ever since. But I enjoy it. It's a lot of fun. And I really hope everything works out and I can share the 
experience of cooking this stuff down with you. This is Just Row at Metcalf Mills. Like this video if you will. Subscribe to my channel and I look forward to seeing y'all next time.